When people think of female villains who've worked with the Joker, Harley Quinn is often understandably what first comes to mind. In later years, time of recording, perhaps you'll also have Punchline add to the list. However, there are some deeper cuts to be made. For the first time, the Joker teamed up with a female accomplice dates all the way back to the Golden Age, and for many to a forgotten character named Queenie, aka the Black Queen. Those are names that have since been reused for various characters, and even that original Queenie had a bit of an update on her in an adaptation that shifted her more from equal to mall. Also, it appears that there is a huge missed opportunity with Queenie time of recording in regards to 2024's first season of Batman the Cape Crusader. So we're gonna take a look at all that. Queenie is an interesting case and a character with a lot of potential that deserves to be re-explored. So let's take a look at her and you can tell me what you think and if you agree. I'm Sasha, this is Casually Comics, and it's time to to head back to the Golden Age. Queenie, as she starts off the issue being called, debuted in Batman number no. 5 in the year 1941. In the story, The Riddle of the Missing Card, written by Bill Finger, pencils Bob Kane, Grain of Salt, inks Jerry Robinson, and George Russo, who also did the lettering. This story is one that has been reprinted a decent amount of times. You'll have it in Golden Age Omnis, you'll also have it in things like the Joker's 75th year anniversary celebration. It's a story that's been deemed significant for a few reasons. Queenie may be among them, but it tends to also be a couple of other things that we'll point out. But the thing is, it's it's around, it's made the rounds and continues to do so. With all of that said, what is the riddle of the missing card? We're early days, the Riddler hasn't fully claimed that gimmick yet because it doesn't exist. Queenie and the other members of her gang feature on the teaser page, which shows that will be playing into the Joker's playing card motif. This is a, but we thought the Joker was dead story, but surprise, he's alive. Since Batman number one and the second Joker story therein, because he appears in that issue twice, the Joker had already miraculously returned to life after being stabbed in the heart. That was how it ended the second story, but then he got better by editorial demand within the the same story. They had to add some panels on at the end. This started the trend off of the Joker seemingly dying but then returning to life. So that's baked deeply into the Joker's history. And that's also potentially why this is a significant issue. This story starts off detailing how the Joker survived his death by falling into a body of water. A classic. Want to survive in a fictional story? Just aim at that water. He's rescued by Queenie and her gang because she recognizes him. Hey, you gone crazy? Put the light out. The cops will see us. Shut up. Can't you see who it is? It's the Joker. That name seems to work magic, for the others quickly steer the boat to the Joker's bobbing form, later in a deserted factory building nearby. How come you were floating around the water at this time of night? Another time of day would have been less weird, I guess. <laughs> Had a tussle with the Batman. <laughs> Fell down to sewage water. Kept swimming through the pipe till I found where it empties. <laughs> then you found me. After the Joker has regained some of his strength, <laughs> I'm curious to know why you hesitated to pick me up at first. <laughs> hiding something from the police? You guessed it. We had a steward hide some diamonds on incoming steamer. And then we smuggle them in, but the diamond smuggling business is pretty well shot. What with the war going on? Inconsiderate. There's a war on and people can't get their smuggled diamonds. Queenie has quite the look. She's very fashionable. We have the cape, the all black motif, along with the dark hair. It's quite striking. And she's also drawn quite confidently with the cocked hip and looking down her nose. She has a lot of personality from design alone. She comes across as authoritative, assertive, someone who can get stuff done. She's clearly also the leader of her gang. She saved the Joker, not out of the goodness of her heart, but because she wants something from him. She likes the way that he plans his crimes and thinks that maybe they can work together. She likes how creative he is. I'll introduce us. I'm Queenie. This is Diamond Jack Deegan. And the big lug is Clubsy. <laughs> I've just had a droll thought. I'm the Joker. We have black-haired Queenie, the Black Queen, Diamond Jack, the Jack of Diamonds, and Clubsy. Here, the king of clubs, four cards, four cards, about to play a game of chance with the police. This naming positions this group as a proto-royal flesh gang, which also may be why this is an issue of note. Now they all have more overtly playing card names, although they already had them there, is building it up to match the Joker, to align with his playing card motif. Now the royal flesh gang most are familiar with wouldn't debut until 1966. The ones who also had the costumes and weren't associated with the Joker. But when people do associate him with the flesh gang, it may be a nod to this early outing. There's some almost flirtation between Joker and the now Black Queen, or rather from him to her, just in the way he's touching her face. But the Black Queen is no mall. She's just interested in the business perspective. They're very much played as equals. The plan is to set up a gambling ship that they will run so that they can then rob the clientele. They'll all play different roles. They'll pretend to be hostess, guests, someone can case. It's all gonna work out. And now a toast to the success of the four cards, the Joker. The Black Queen. The Jack of Diamonds and the king of clubs. This plan works and they managed to pull it off more than once. This alerts Bruce Wayne who decides that he's gonna go in 
incognito, but as himself, but still undercover. But as he prepares, he cuts himself shaving, which is gonna be important. I don't know why so many people are returning to the ship with a reputation for being robbed, but they are. Queenie is the host of this ship, so she acquaints herself with Bruce Wayne. By chance, sure, he makes the acquaintance of Queenie, who acts the part of hostess on the ship. Tell me, what does one do around here for excitement? Standing at a table and throwing away my money seems rather tiresome. I'm sorry you're bored. Good looking chap. Nasty cut in his chin. From shaving, probably. I dare say you're about the only exciting thing aboard the ship. You're quite pretty, you know. Thanks for the compliment. Sure you can spare it? Funny thing, I get the feeling his boredom is an act. As if he were playing a part. Guess I'm crazy. But he is nice. Queenie likes Bruce, and this is going to end poorly for her. This is the beginning of her downfall, as it is for so many women in the Batman series. He's discovered while he's sneaking and he learns about their plan, and he's thrown overboard, and this actually bothers her. He's thawing her ice heart with his incredibly square, wounded chin. The limp form of Bruce Wayne is dropped over the side. What are you doing? He'll drown. <laughs> exactly. Dead men tell no tales. He overheard our plans, and you calling me the Joker. I must protect myself. Bruce was prepared for all this, so he's fine, and he returns with Robin, so we can have a fight sequence, which ends up with him seemingly dying, but of course he's fine, and Robin getting captured. This results in a ransom-style situation, where he has to return to get Robin, and it leads to something really interesting. <laughs> ah, a man of your word, Batman. Come right in. Allow me to introduce my companions, the Black Queen, the Jack of Diamonds, and the King of Clubs. Not forgetting the Joker, of course. My, my, aren't you all just cards? Marked cards. Hi, Robin. At the Joker's invitation, the Batman seats himself at the table for a game of cards. <laughs> we play for high stakes. Perhaps a life may be lost. All life is a gamble. Start dealing, Joker, and not from the bottom of the deck. His chin, a nick in it just like Bruce Wayne's. Then he's not dead, and he, he's the Batman. This positions Queenie as highly intelligent. Now, as the reader, it would seem obvious that people would notice that Bruce is Batman more often, but inside universe, it's meant to be something that's a more well-guarded secret. So the fact that she knows is right away makes her unique. It also dooms her. That's not the only thing that doomed her, but it sealed the fate, changing it from prison to death. First, the gang is betrayed by the Joker, who locks them in an all-steel room on the boat and sets fire to it while he tries to escape with the jewels. It's then revealed that Queenie is up for theft and those kind of things, but not murder. But that's partially because of the thawing of her ice heart, because of Bruce's chin. But here's where it gets a bit convoluted. In trying to protect Batman and stop Jack from shooting him and saying she's not into murder, she ends up shooting Jack. You're not going to kill him. <gasps> what? Why did you save my life? I, I don't understand. I, I couldn't let him kill you. Stop asking me so many questions. Suddenly, there is a shot, and the Black Queen slumps in the Batman's arms. That'll fix you, dub and crush. Ugh. She's been shot. This is my finish. I guess I loved you all the time, Mr. Bruce Wayne. I'm going. Please kiss me. Kiss me before it's too late. She knew I was Bruce Wayne. Also, he still kisses her? <laughs> it was a dying request, after all. He is a gentleman. <laughs> Thanks. Oh. Dead. Queenie just did the villainous Batman love interest speed run, ending in death because it's the golden age. It does come off as a contrived way to get her out of the way, and it does feel a bit like a loss because this arc could have been spread out for a while. As we'll see with later villains, this interplay between hero, villain, love interest, and who knows his identity and who doesn't, it can be quite interesting. There were unique elements to Queenie that would have been fun to see stick around. The fact that she's this crime boss and she's kind of playing in the gangland realm. It was interesting, and the idea that she had found his identity out so quickly, would she have kept it a secret? There were all kinds of things to do, but it was early days. Villains tended not to recur so much at the time, the Joker being an exception rather than the rule. And most of the villains who would end up recurring would become those more outlandish supervillain types. There were also morality rules in play in the Golden Age. They were just looser than the code that ended up arising in the Silver after the moral panic and the hearings. But there were certain things that were in play, especially surrounding women. Queenie was falling into a femme fatale 
task mode, wherein she was doing all these things that were against the status quo, they were definitely increasing her chances of being punished in some way, and death was not out of the question. Even with all that in play, it is a little disappointing, but not as disappointing as things that are to come. By that, I'm not referring to the 1960s, where Queenie would reappear. In the 1966 series starring Adam West and Burt Ward, Queenie would appear in the fifth and sixth episodes of the first season. The Joker is wild, and Batman is riled. She was played by Nancy Kovac, and was a ditzy blonde gangster's mall, who some feel is a proto for Harley Quinn. It's my Aladdin's lamp. Gee, can I make a wish on it? Do, my pretty. This episode is more based on the story of the Joker's utility belt, but does feature the Joker and his gang stealing the SS Gotham, which is an idea that Joker gets from Queenie. Gosh, you think you could use your utility belt to uh, get me a cruise on the SS Gotham? A cruise? I'll get you the whole ship! This is also part of the Joker's utility belt storyline, but Queenie is an addition to this, and aside from bearing the same name as the character in the Batman number no. 5 issue, bears little other similarities, to the point where it may be coincidental. She's very much not an equal in this one, she's not presented the same way as the Queenie from 1941. There is an interesting shift from golden to silver age and the rules about how women are depicted. The boat is part of this episode and that Joker wants it, but there's no using it as a ruse to lure Marks and rob them, because as mentioned, this is more adapted in the utility belt story. But time of recording, all of this may have some viewers thinking of something else, the Caped Crusader. The Cape Crusader is a Batman animated series that was first released on August 1st, 2024, all 10 episodes of the first season on Amazon Prime. The first episode, In Treacherous Waters, features a crime boss who operates a boat that is also a ruse for criminal enterprises, and on it there's entertainment and games, most likely gambling. This is a female crime boss who's trying to gain a name for herself, trying to amass more turf. She has all of these henchmen who are completely willing to work for her, and of course this is Quinn, no it's not, you know it's the female penguin. This show did have have some discourse around the decision to gender swap the penguin, making this penguin a female crime boss, a cold mother who ran the Iceberg Lounge as a party maybe gambling yacht while also doing body cabaret style shows and being willing to kill her own children. He was my favorite. Guess that makes you my favorite now. One of the discussions that arose around this was the but why though factor. And as more and more interviews have been done with the creators, particularly Bruce Tim, some interesting quotes have emerged. One quote in particular stands out to me. Bruce Tim stated, James and I were talking about the overview of the show, and we said one of the problems with Batman as he is, is there's a lack of good villains. You've got Catwoman, you've got Poison Ivy, you've got Harley Quinn, but it would be really good to have more female villains. And off the top of my head, I said, we never really could figure out exactly what to do with the Penguin, what the gimmick for the Penguin would be. What if we gender flip the penguin? James Tucker then goes on to say that, that gave him a flood of ideas, a plethora. But it wasn't his idea initially, it's just something he went with after Tim suggested it. If one examines what was done in the episode, which was the penguin is a scary mob boss operating in plain sight and kind of able to hide in the shadows by having this alternate, more legitimate seeming persona, having this club that would lure in the elite, but also serve as a place where the underworld could also operate. And they also add the mom aspect, scary mommy willing to kill her kids. The little fink is spilling it to Gordon right now. Let me have one of the insiders take care of it. Keep it quiet. No, it's too late for quiet. All of this seems like a missed opportunity for Queenie. There are already similar beats to the story, which is why it made me think of using her instead of, rather than as well as. Because you have the crime ship, a female crime boss, there's even a scene in both where Bruce goes overboard. In all fairness to Tim, it can be hard to think of female villains off the top of one's head. However, one would hope that when planning a show, one would have a bit more time to do a bit more of a deep dive. While Queenie may be more obscure to the layperson, she has a long history that was not only updated in the 60s version in an adaptation, but she features in a story that has been reprinted several times and deemed a historically significant Joker story, which many fans who are interested in the history of Batman and the Joker, particularly in the Golden Age, will have encountered, even if not for Queenie, just for the history of those two characters. And this series was paying a lot of homages to the Golden Age. So so it may be logical to assume that one would go back there in search of inspiration or characters to pull from, not just look at the aesthetic, but also the stories. It would have been a nice touch to pick an early female villain who had a lot of potential from that era and use her. 
update Queenie, give her a chance to have more of a story than she got to in 1941. One could have taken the beats that were there because there was a lot to play with, or even taken what was done for the Penguin in this episode and it would still have worked for Queenie. Perhaps not some of the body more cabaret elements, but there could still have been a starlet or showgirl element. Definitely some vampy elements. She was already primed for it. She had the look already because she was from that era. All the things that were done could have been done with Queenie and the Joker didn't need to be involved. You could even have added the mom element just as an update. While the decision to go with a more well-known villain, even if slightly altered, is understandable, highlighting a more obscure female villain could have been a nice touch. It's a way that one could have avoided the controversy from the swap, which one would have known based on the online climate and just fan discourse in general would have been coming. Whether one enjoyed this version of the Penguin or not, people do tend to enjoy renditions of characters they are familiar with that are closer to what they are used to, particularly if they don't feel that the change added much. Where you're in a situation of, but why though? And the answer is, but why not? Then it's an impasse and people can argue for both sides and have and will. Of course, some would never have liked it regardless, but in that case, there's not much one can do. And the change just needs to live or die on story strength and reception. Regardless of all of that, it does feel like a shame in and of itself to have not used Queenie. And one could also play with that tension of people who were starting to see a bit through Bruce, which was a thing that was running through season one. If I didn't know any better, I think you really are the shallow cardboard cutout you pretend to be. Oh well, there's always season two. Justice for Queenie. There's still time. Queenie is most likely not the inspiration for Harley either, unless it's in the sense that the Joker has a female counterpoint. The later 60s Queenie bears more in common with Harley than the Black Queen, so some could argue an indirect link. It's just that because Harley became so well known over time and such a big deal in Batman lore, she is often used as the reference point. People look to see sources for her inspiration and sometimes apply them where similarities may be more incidental. But all of these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think of Queenie? Did you know about her? Do you feel like it was a missed opportunity to not use her in the Cape Crusader time of recording? Maybe she's there now. Do you not care for her? Do you think she is the inspo for Harley, even if indirectly? Your thoughts, I want to hear them. Please put them down below. And while you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking some time today spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.